Hello, this presentation is about how to execute the process flow diagram. I will explain the reason for doing this, but also we go into the stakeholders, their requirement and how we can achieve this transformation with zero code. I will also show you a live example of this transformation. At the end, we go into the benefits of an integrated approach. So let's go to the first point. Why do we need to execute the process flow? You have invested or you will invest a lot of time in process modeling, process analysis, adding other IT artifacts like interfaces, application, and there are also other information objects like KPI, critical success factors, compliance requirements to your enterprise architecture model. But so what? If you cannot transfer your model, your design, your blueprint into real operational world, you will miss a very beneficial part of your modeling exercise where you actually can prove your return on investment. An integrated approach is most valuable, especially if you can achieve this with zero code, completely wizard-based, so it's perfect for business users. So now, what are the stakeholders and their requirements? There are different teams all interested in your architectural information, compliance teams, enterprise architects, operational teams, and other teams. For example, the compliance team are looking for an automation for their audit planning, for the audit life cycle. The ent ar enterprise architects looking for automation for the change requests for the IT uh, objects. The operational teams may be looking for an implementation of a service desk system. And the other teams looking for some collaborative features like feedback approval cycles. So they're all different ideas of how to execute the process. How can we do this now with a 100% model-driven solution? In order to achieve this, we need first a model. So we need to specify our processes with different notation, we decompose from a higher level into a lower level diagram. We have all the cross relationships between the objects. So we can link all the objects together and navigate with them. So that's the first step actually to have this kind of model in place. As a second step, we can then start modeling the workflow itself. In this little example is our credit check. We add the customer detail, there's a credit decision and either positive or negative. So it's a simple process flow with one business rule. A web form needs to be filled out, the finance manager is making the credit decision and based on this decision an email notification is sent out. So this simple process flow is also part then of the later product presentation. Once we have done this, the next step is we need to transform this model into the design environment of a workflow. We can add any kind of object. You can see here some text box and other object types simple by drag and drop. We can also simulate this process in the design stage to make sure that it's uh, optimized for the implementation. Once we deploy the workflow, we have either the runtime environment or we can do this via Outlook. Important is we can finally execute the workflow. After the execution, we can see a lot of dashboarding information, the business activity monitoring out of the whole solution. So we went from the specification of the uh, solution, we have modeled the solution. After the transformation, we went into the design mode. We have deployed, obviously, also our workflow. And after the execution, we have finally the benefit of managing the whole situation. After this, it feeds back into the specification model and design for continuous improvement. So let's take a look to the live presentation where I transform the process check credit into an executable workflow. This diagram is the same as you have seen in the previous video where we have created a process flow diagram. It's a check credit. On the left hand side, we can see some associations for the specific object. But let's drill down to the lower level process flow diagram, which we actually want to execute. You can see the different process steps to add customer details. We send the credit check request to finance manager and based on the decision, the business rule is either positive or negative and an email confirmation gets sent. If we select an object, again, we can see the same associations to workflow systems, to the different entities that needs to be used for the web form. Also for this message with a form, we can see what are the different entities that should appear on our screen, on our form. We also have the capability of looking to the CRUD matrix to get an understanding who can create, read, update or delete the entities during this workflow. So we have the entities on one X and the processes on the other X. And we can see on the intersection object the different status. 
For example, if the credit check is denied, we, the, the credit decision should be available. If it's positive, then it shouldn't be available. So let's go to the next step. Actually, we want to transform the workflow. So we select this, work, this process flow, select the transformation, and then a wizard supports us in transforming this diagram into the workflow. During this little transformation, the diagram gets simulated to make sure it's consistent and you have an event, a process chain and at least a result. So after we press the go button here, we can then see the design environment from the workflow engine and we can actually start designing this workflow into more detail. First we can see the add customer details, again the same process step with the same decision. So that's identical from our modeling exercise. Now let's simulate this diagram to see how it looks like. You can simulate obviously in the model environment as well as in the design environment. If you select the object like add customer detail, you will see there is a description on the right hand side where you can see all the textual description, some simulation data, the quantity, the resources and so on. And you can also see some live data in with the dashboard view and you can also see the historical data and the current data and then you can compare and see how your optimization uh, turns out good or bad. So another part is the form itself. You can design the form very easily. You don't need any code. You have the customer name, the email and if you want to add something else you simply click on the object palette and you drag and drop the objects on your form and that's pretty much it. So you don't need any code, it's simple to use. Let's apply these changes and then take a closer look to the other interfaces that you can add. So we have, you have seen some human activities but also server activities like database listener, file listener, some web services of course. Also the BizDoc integration is available and around 20 different SharePoint listeners that you can use for integration. So let's close the window and go to an execution of our process credit check. Before we do this I will minimize the window so we can see on the left hand side the process and the right hand side we execute the process. So this is actually our add customer detail now in the executional environment. You can see the name and we'll just add the credit amount to 55,000 we can also see our own text field that we have just added, but for now we request the credit check. Then the next step is to send the credit check request to the finance manager. In our case it's Mark Brown and you can see the information took over from the other form and we finally can deny this credit check and we can even add the comment. And you can do this either in this runtime environment or you can do this completely via Outlook. So in this case we make our decision and because it's negative, uh, the customer is getting a, co a confirmation that the credit was denied. The workflow is successful and now we go to Peter Green and take a look how this email looks like. So we have received this email and you can see on the right hand side you can see the text Dear Peter Green, nicely formed email also with the explanation why it's negative. And obviously different uh, workflows have different symbols and icons as well. So I hope you have enjoyed this live presentation. Let's go back to the benefits of an integrated approach. It provides you with a modern and agile human or system centric BPM. It's a holistic enterprise platform for rapid development to control and manage business risks. It defines and automates business process transformation. It utilizes existing investment into process model and frameworks. It's an end-to-end -end process enablement. It also gives you the advantage of integrate with your existing e-business infrastructure. It unifies underlying technology of organization. It's scalable, flexible and it's a customizable environment. In terms of performance management, it gives you a higher return on investment coupled with a reduced cycle time of deploying and implementing workflows, increased usability for business users and IT professionals. So it's time for a break. I hope you have enjoyed the presentation. Any feedback is more than welcome.